Now we'll be looking at the causes and impacts of habitat loss. Remembering a habitat is a place where an organism lives, finds food and reproduces. And if one loses this habitat, often it leads to species extinction. And extinction is a natural biological process. Okay, it has happened and it always will happen. But now it's speeded up and it's is far faster, 50 to 500 times faster than the natural rate. And so there have been um, mass extinctions before, and it's now claimed that this is now the next uh, natural mass extinction, or the next mass extinction that's happening in the Earth's history. And But this one's different because it's due to human activities, and it's compressed into a far shorter time frame than these other uh, extinctions have happened. And it's happening faster than new species can evolve. So let's look at the reasons for habitat loss. Uh, there are three main reasons, and the first being the drainage of the wetlands. Another being intensive, these intensive agricultural practices that have helped uh, the, the growing of food for this growing population, and the deforestation that has also been as a result of increased population and demand for land. Okay, let's look first at the wetlands. There are, it's difficult to estimate the amount of the wetlands, but seven to nine million square kilometers uh, is an estimate of, of how much there is as wetlands. Remember, some of it is rice paddies and things like that. Um, so four to six percent of the, the Earth's land surface. For most years up until recently, wetland has been regarded as worthless uh, because one couldn't grow stuff on it and it was swamp, a uh, useless swamp. But more and more people are becoming aware of the environmental services that the wetland provides. Um, it provides flood control because it's on the banks of the river and it absorbs that water, it acts like a sponge. Um, and controls the water from flooding out um, and into homes and, and agricultural land. It, it recharges the aquifer because it's a sponge. Uh, it fills up the groundwater. It holds the water long enough instead of sending it all down the rivers. It holds it and holds, uh, lets it re fill up the aquifers around about biological productivity. Okay, there are a mass of, of organisms that live and depend on these wetlands. It provides a habitat for fish, wildfowl, fuel, and fiber. Okay, drainage of wetland. Why are these wetlands being drained? Um, so originally, it's in the 1900s, there was twice as much land covered by wetland than there is today. And it's been drained over the years. So mostly for to provide for agricultural land. So if you put drainage lines in, in the wetland, you can drain out the water and then that's a fertile area that you can grow stuff in. Um, also, it was to stop floods. Uh, so people would dredge them and get rid of all the water thinking that they would, uh, instead of realizing that there were flood protection, thinking that you could drain the wetlands and reduce the floods. Often roads now crisscross these, these wetlands and when they, the, the material that they've cleared away for the roads, the, the earthworks would then get disposed of in the wetland, fill up the wetland with the, the road excess. Pollutants from, from industry are, are now um, contaminating, polluting these wetlands as well, causing a mass, uh, yeah, killing off of the, the organisms that live in the wetlands. Wetlands for over thousands of years 
if they stay in the same place and peat, the, uh, the sedimentary layers build up and underneath uh, are quite often peat layers. And so this peat has been harvested and removed, which would also lead to the destruction of the wasteland. Uh, removal of groundwater, taking the water out of it for use to, to irrigate or for usage in houses. Tourism facilities. So, yes, in, in places thinking about the Okavango, those sort of places, um, some of the wetland would have been used for tourist facilities. Malaria prevention. Wetlands are quite there's quite a lot of standing water and mosquitoes would probably thrive there and so perhaps some of the wetlands have been have been drained to get rid of those sort of problems. Intensive agriculture. Okay, we said that was another of the reasons for uh, the destruction of habitat and agriculture poses perhaps the greatest threat to species survival because it's taken up so much habitat uh, as we've increased the demand and as our population has increased we've increased our demand for food and therefore have taken up huge swaths of land for agriculture and so uh, the threat to extinction of 63 percent of the vertebrates has come from the need for agriculture and the clearing of land for crop lands and it's estimated that 80% of the bird species on Earth have been lost due to the clearing of forests for palm oil. Other um, practices like insecticides and pesticides, herbicides, also have far-reaching consequences by killing unintended species. Okay, deforestation, as we said, was the third reason for habitat loss. And okay, a climax community is for, these forests form a climax community. And what a climax community is is it's a stable community that is characteristic of an area, and it persists as long as the climate doesn't change. So forests form a climax community in many parts of the world and in very in a variety of altitudes. They form a continuous cover and under that cover they provide a habitat for all sorts of species for a wide range of populations of species. So for tree and ground dwelling species and their tropical rainforests in South and Central Africa well, South America and Central Africa are said to be one of the some of the most diverse species and most diverse habitats on Earth. And so if these things were lost, if these areas were lost, all the species there, all those populations in that stable community would um, possibly be lost altogether. Okay, some of the impacts of habitat loss. The, the, as we lose the habitat, we lose the biodiversity and genetic, genetic depletion. Uh, and so uh, that's very sad when it comes to all the animals and all the species. But just thinking about as far as agriculture goes, 10,000 years ago, as early as 10,000 years ago, People were hunters and gatherers that they didn't plant any crops. And it is estimated that about 10,000 years ago, people started uh, planting crops. The first seeds were planted. And since then, we have uh, selected the parents and selectively bred the seeds since then. So through natural selection now, um, we've, it, it's been beneficial for the food produ production because generally we've, we've selected for seeds that have high yields. But perhaps the, the genetic base has got narrower and narrower. And modern varieties are less able to adapt to the climate changes that we're facing now. And so while there have been some efforts to, to save some of these ancient seeds, some of them are lost altogether or, or, or are extinct. Um, and 
we need to re retain as much of the bi biodiversity of the wild as we can, because the there are things that exist in the wild that we, we don't know what use they might be put to. One day we might need them and we might have, if we're careless about looking after them, we might have lost those things that will provide for our future. Okay, please, as far as that goes, please can you make some notes on that and self-assessment 9.9 .9 and 9.10 on page 202 for those people still at home.